we wish to find ourselves in the imagination. Well, I maintain that uh, this desire is a kind of nostalgia for a paradisical uh, possibility that actually existed in the past and that to understand the human predicament we're going to have to come to terms with the idea that which has been around for a long time but not given much coinage recently that history is a fall that this is a lesser state than we have known in the past that all this material culture and all this exhibition of energy control and so forth and so on is actually uh, these are the toys of lesser gods and that uh, being integrated in nature at peace with the rhythms of life and death and co-identified with the eternal organism of community that these were actually higher uh, and nobler ideas that somehow became compromised uh, with the fall into history and it has to do uh, with our relationship to the lo lost continents of our own minds I mean that's what this psychedelic thing is really about I think it's as profound as uh, uh, the European discovery of the lost half of the planet 500 years ago it's that half of the human mind became disconnected uh, from the ego. And for a thousand years or more, these things have drifted in such profound estrangement from each other that when reunited, the only thing we can map it to is a flying saucer invasion or a descent of angelic intent or something because we have become so alienated from the collective images of, uh, of the soul. And while it's true that shamanism has existed forever and ever and that people, some people, midwives, shamans, visionaries, schizophrenics uh, have been doing this in all times and places nevertheless it now has a special poignancy because the the official philosophy of our civilization capitalism materialism reductionism I guess that's it maybe misogyny is in there somewhere uh, is, has played itself out. It's failed. Modernism has failed. Modernity has failed. The, the rational analysis of matter has led to the revelation of the irrationality of matter. Uh, the uh, uh, attempts to uh, create systems of perfect deterministic prediction have led to the revelation of the chaos that haunts all systems and makes all prediction in principle impossible. The prosecution of the dream of a formal edifice of logic to explain uh, uh, mathematical structures and truth has given way to Gödel's incommensurability theorem which shows you that basically nothing makes sense. Uh, everywhere where reason has shown its light, this, the uh, greater darkness has been revealed. And so I think a turning point has come in the human enterprise. Childhood's end is upon us. We have to drop the naive assumptions of certain truth, perfect understanding, uh, uh, the conjuring rod of reason turns out to be a fairly weak magic after all. And we have to begin to cultivate a sense of mystery, a sense of living without closure, because that in fact is how the world is. The world is a mystery. It's not going to yield to the fragile constructs of the human mind. Some portion may be rationally apprehensible, but the basic uh, facts of the matter are that we do not know where we come, nor why, nor where we're going, 
nor according to what plan. And in, instead of seeking a flawed communication with the intentionality of deity, I think the psychedelic religious agenda, if that's how you want to think of it, uh, is a more modest one. It's a cultivation of a sense of wonder in the presence of something which obviously cannot be encompassed by the human mind. I mean, it can no more be encompassed by the human mind than the ocean can be emptied into a thimble. And uh, once you get that straight, you can go back to getting high, staying tight with your friends, making love, growing your garden, and uh, appreciating the, uh, the felt presence of experience and realizing that the abstraction game, the high modeling game, is in fact simply a game and that there should be no emotional investment in these structures. I mean, what I've learned from the mushrooms ultimately is that ideas are for play. And uh, the final payback from all of this is uh, a sense of fun, a sense of humor. The truth, for sure, when it arrives, will make you smile. If it doesn't, uh, you know, you should seek uh, a deeper truth. And so, uh, you know, for a long time it troubled me, this question of, of truth and falsity. And now I think that it's more like this, that the person who has the best idea, or let's put it this way, the best idea, and that means the, the funniest idea, the idea that brings the small smile to the corners of your mouth, that idea will win. It, it will win. It's twee, the cheerful you know, twee treads on the tail of the tiger. No blame. No blame because tw the, the cheerfulness of twee overcomes the inherent reticence of the world. Uh, the light touch is the right touch. And if, if psychedelics don't give this to you, you may be an incurable case, you know. There may be no, no hope for you but Martin Heidegger uh, in high doses or whatever they do with people uh, who have uh, displaced funny bones. The, <laughs> the world is truly a strange place, getting stranger all the time. It's more the character of a pun or a, uh, a, an optical illusion than it is the, the, the world of humorless, scurrying, gray atoms and invisible forces that we inherit from nature. The laboratory of being is your own body, your experience. I mean, everything else is going to come as an unconfirmable rumor so fraught around with epistemological problems that you might as well toss it out at the beginning and not even bother with it. The basic thing is the empowerment of experience. That's why sexuality has always raised such a ruckus uh, in, uh, uh, among authority freaks. It's why the psychedelic is so unsettling. It's why youth itself is unsettling uh, because these things cause symmetry breaks. They cause uh, a shift in perspective. But this is, in fact, at this point in time, exactly what we have to have. It may be, you know, that we're going to rack and ruin, but it, it's, not, it's not an unconscious process. There are the technologies, the information retrieval systems, uh, the engineering capacities to fight like hell against the dying of the light, if that's what's going on. But the will has to be activated. And the problem is that the people creating 
the problems, which are the people in the high-tech industrial democracies, people like you and me, are the furthest from the consequences of the problems. You know, I mean, here we anticipate uh, the apocalypse, and it's a, it's a theological discussion. You go to Somalia, and the apocalypse is well underway. It's moved beyond the planning stage in many parts of the world, but the parts that we don't go to. And yet, we represent, for all our humility and financial difficulties, whatever they may be, we represent probably the 5% of the world's people who have some ability to contact, control, and direct the resources and the technologies uh, that are available on this planet. I mean, if you're able to sit here at Esalen this evening, then you automatically are in that 5% classed as, you know, the world controllers, uh, you and your friends, yeah. Why can't uh, if enough people lock into that space um, of like undeniable unity to cause all, almost an epidemic on the planet of that? Well, I'm not worried. I, I think that what is happening is a transformational process, not the bankruptcy of ideology, not the spin down of technical civilization. I'll argue t through much of tomorrow and tomorrow evening that history is not our fault, that you no more can blame us for the shape of human history than you can blame a fetus for the unfolding morphology within the womb, that uh, history is the necessary distortion of an animal species to lead it to the brink of an ontological transformation. I. Uh, when we get into this issue of politics, it's a very tricky issue, I think, from, to handle from a psychedelic point of view, because the psychedelic point of view, as I read it at a fairly deep level, is that it's a done deal. It's okay. You know, basically, we're going to make it. We've been on a straight line vector for millions of years with this transcendental attractor that has shaped us, called us out of matter, and is revealing itself through us. But knowing that is not permission for uh, sitting on your can or ceasing to participate in the struggle to create a just and, uh, and caring society. It does mean that you shouldn't worry that worry is off the menu, that you don't know enough to worry is, is one of the arguments to be made. Uh, so I think what we, it, it's basically a case of we need to act uh, locally and think not simply globally, but cosmically. And, and in our cosmic ruminations, struggle to erase boundaries and to see that, you know, the difference between us and the next species in waiting in the evolutionary <laughs> elevator and the difference between life and death and the difference between pre- and post-history, these are differences that can be easily erased. And when they are, uh, what comes through is this lost sense of unity and purpose and rightness that we're uh, trying to recapture. Well, that's all I really wanted to say about that tonight. I didn't want to keep you past 10. Uh, we'll get together here tomorrow morning.